Humbidi diddle de highly died, oh humbidi dee lum diddle de died, oh humbidi diddle de died, oh humbidi dee died, oh humbidi dee lum die. So, where are we today, boys and girls? Where are we? It says on the side, the pool of Muckert. And where is the pool of Muckert? Right next to Muckert. Right next to Muckert. It's, well, it's part of Muckert. Now, this is the parish of Muckert, right? Now, in ancient times, this was the territory of Forthrith, comprising of the land lying all the way. Oh, are you alright, Justin? All right. All the way between the Ocals and the River Forth. Then all the way west in front of us to Stirling, and then east behind us to Loch Leven. Now, does anyone know where the name Muckert comes from? No, no idea, Catherine? No. Well, let me tell you a little secret. So, this used to all be a forest, something called the Caledonian Forest. And it came all the way from Glasgow out to here. Now, we've said before, this is where we're up really, really high up above sea level. So the muck part referred to a type of animal that used to run about the woods here. What kind of animal do you think was here in the picked times, Chloe? Some sort of giant cow. Some sort of giant cow. Mm, you're Since good. muck is cow in Gaelic. Well, you're close. You're very close. It actually means boar, wild boar. And what do you think the second part, aired, means? Muck or muck art. What do you think the art bit means? So we're on the high ground. Any ideas? So it means the high ground, Chloe. Okay. So it's the muck, the wild boar, and the... High boar? The high boar, yeah. So it's the high ground where the boar lives. Now, when we saw the sign back there, Muckert had a letter in the middle of it, didn't it? And it had an H. Do you know how Muckert got the H in the middle of its name? No. Well, nobody really knows, right? Because there's nothing in the history books. But, back in the 1700s, a sign writer was employed to write the sign for the post office. And back then, not everyone would have been literate or went to school. And when the sign writer wrote the sign for the post office, he yeah. put an H in Muckert. And it seems that there's been an H in Muckert ever since. Can you believe that? No. So let's just have a look. It's a very picturesque little village, isn't it? Very picturesque. It's lovely. Now, who do you think lived here, Chloe, before? Uh, what kind of people? people? The painted people. Do you know who the painted peoples were? No. The Picti. So these were the first people that lived here. Hunter-gatherer types. Who painted their skin, just like this man who's painting the front of the shop. But they painted their skin instead of hussies. How do they know what? That they painted their skin. Well, because I think it was something called wood. You ever heard of wood? Yeah. So they painted themselves with it. So the reason that we know that they painted themselves is through the Roman records. Now that's actually the next part I was going to go on to because the Romans, when they came here, so in recorded history, there's not very much written. But there is a record of the Romans coming to Britain and coming to Scotland. So what they did was they built a wall between the fourth estuary and the Clyde. No, 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 that was down in England. This one was called the Antonine Wall. This wasn't nearly as, as popular, but there was a battle just further north called Mons Grampus. And that was when the Romans came through here. They went north and they went, do you know what? We don't really fancy this. Yeah. They're quite rough up here. So just up to the north there where the famous warlock John Bruges lived, there was said to be a Roman camp. So the Romans had a station down at Alawa, and there was a long road heading east, coming from Stirling, 
right up through Clipman and Shurn into the Ochels. Now, the Ochels is a bit of a barrier for going north. But, if you know this area at all, Dunning Glen is a wee sneaky bit right through the middle of the Ochel Hills. And that is where Agricola and his Roman ar army are meant to have set up camp, just at Glen Devon. Now, I don't think we've found any remains of it, but there is a strong suggestion that the Romans came through here. Now, there we go, you can see the other end of Muckerp there, just leaving. Let's have a wee look. Yeah. Now, after the Roman Kames came, the historical record is quite quiet until 430 AD. And what do you think happened? What do you think was the next big change in Scottish history, guys? The Romans fell. Well, the Romans fell, but what came after them? You can't mind. You can't mind. So, the biggest event to happen since the Romans was the coming of the Christian ministries at Curus, where they found someone called St. Serf. Now, have anyone ever heard of the word St. Serf before? Yeah. Well, the church in the Crooked Heaven is called St. Surf, and there are lots and lots of places named after this gentleman because he had a profound influence on the people of Scotland. Well, now, he, what's his name? That's it, his name was aye, St. Surf. So he used to preach at the foot of Demiat, which is a hill just along at the end of the Ochels. You know Demiat, don't you, Chloe? We've climbed it. You've climbed it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can ride your bike here. Now. That's right, Drumburn Road, yeah. So, St. Surf was set, oh, so there's a St. Surf's well in Alva, just along the road. And there's a reminder of his ministry there, right? And do you know what it says? In Tillicutri, Till a whiff, twa swannies he rast from deed to lift. Now, what that means, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. Maybe he revived some swans? <laughs> Maybe he revived some swans. That certainly could be. So, what we're doing here is we're walking down some of the old paths. And these are the old roads that existed before the roads that we have these days with the cars. So, the roads here would link up all the big houses so when we look to the pool of muckart just as we come in that's ballyisk and the wee path there meets up to the house and this was it was another path that took you from one side of muckart to the other isn't it this is starting to become less of a walk and more of a hike more of a hike you think well that's no bad thing is it yeah no so we've got to 430 AD. Now after that, it's about another 400 years till we get any historical record. And that was the Battle of Tillabuddy in 873. The Battle of Dollar in 877. Oh, they're building a house in there. Oh wow, let's see that, Justin. I don't know. I think we're going this way. This way. Oh, hey, let's go this way. Now, after those battles, there's another two or three hundred years till 1175 in the reign of William the Lion. And that's when de Mucard was shown to be in the parish of St. Andrews. Or the diocese of St. Andrews. Now, the best known bishop of them was William de Lamberton, who, along with Robert the Bruce and Conwyn, was a commissioner appointed by Sir William Wallace to rule Scotland. So this wee parish here in Mucker has an attachment right back to the formation of Scotland as we know it. Oh look, there's a wee Drumburn Lodge. A nice wee house there. 
Well, just walk off it then, you'll be fine. Ah, maybe this is why it's called Brombone right here. Because it's got the burn, yeah, let's have a look at the burns. This is exactly why it's called Drum Burn House, because it's actually got a wee burn running right through it, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you like that? I wish I had a wee burn running through my garden. I wish I had a wee burn running through our garden too. I it's lovely. Where are the possibilities of aquatic life? There's lots of possibilities of aquatic life, I think, Especially Nadia. Especially in a slow-falling burn. Oh, yes. Sticklebacks. Maybe even crawfish. Anything. Anything at all, eh? Even baby midges. Some lovely scenery around here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I can see up to the hills there. Mm -hmm. And way up. And look, is this a forest tree? Well, I think that's the burn that comes through there. Yes, yeah, so it's like a community woodland, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We love community woodlands, don't we? Oh, did we miss a blue tit? Oh no. It's flying right across. No, no, we're going straight on. Oh, beautiful. So what do you think of this walk? Thank you. I think there's red squirrels about here. Or so I've been told. They'll probably not live around here with such like a tree cover. Now, there's a lot of really good stuff in the parish records. Now, this road, these roads would have been used by the poor and the rich alike. And there are a lot of stories about travelling people coming to Muckart, coming through Muckart. <laughs> and the parish records look upon these people with quite disdain. But they tell an interesting story of the people who lived in Muckart. Because what we can gain from the records, it seems to say that the people of Muckart were very welcoming to the travelling people. And they would put them up in their homes and allow them to camp in their gardens and all that sort of stuff. But the parish would get the police to get to ask the people not to do such a thing. Now, over on the far side of this field is something called Egypt Field. And in one of the records, it states that over 2,000 travelling people came through Muckart that year. And they did everything they could to discourage the residents from allowing them to stay. And what they ended up doing was putting tolls on either end of the roads. So these were for horse and cart and travelling through. So these little roads became very important as well for a way to the, for the people to try and avoid the tolls. But did they build tolls here? Well, they did. They had tolls at either end of the parish. So anything coming through with goods on them would have to pay this toll and they would be marked down as coming through the parish. Now, back then they would have things called the poor houses and this is where the poor people would go. And they actually banned the travelling people from attending the poor house, and that's why the local people would take them in. Right, now we can see up the other side, over to the golf course. Absolutely stunning. You can see the sun's just starting to come down over there. It is a long walk, isn't it? That's why bikes are meant to meet a bit. So yeah, what we're looking at now is Egypt Copse. So those trees is Egypt wood and we have Egypt Field on the other side. Now this is also where during World War I all the men camped. So we've got the golf course just there. 
And then just to the left of it is a new nine holes. And it's on that field where all the men gathered. And in fact, our friends that are with us today, they've told us a story about how all the people who owned horses around here had to give them up for the war effort. And when all the men left, we have a photo in fact, of all the men coming down this road here from the field and getting onto the train just at the Devil's Bridge, just down from the Devil's Bridge at Rumbling Bridge. And even from the photos you can tell it was something very, very spectacular. They had the pipers, you had the horses, and then this wasn't a thing where a couple of guys were going to war. This was a situation where every able-bodied man, my own relatives included, went, served their time and lost their lives. Absolutely stunning. What do you think, Chloe? Yeah. Did you like it? Are you a bit tired? No. No? It's just, I feel like I'm sweating. You're just a little bit sweaty. No, you're quite right. I am too. Can I cycle here? Of course you can. Cycle wherever you like, pal. Apart from the roads. Apart from on my feet. That would be nice. And main roads. Right. Do you think that's enough for today? Yeah. Nothing. Well, we say bye, boys and girls. Bye. Bye. bye.